<laughs> you gave me the four B. Lady, ooh. And here we go. Keep the levels on the Bubby's Boys podcast. Oh my God, never had a cast. Probably should have had one on my hip though. Broke it like 20 years ago. More like 10. It's okay. Not like Grand Ben. Oh my God. Make amends. Make some peace. Never had a wreath. Say the same shit. Christopher Reeves. I'm like Superman. Fuck. And then give it up for us, the Bubby's Boys. We're the Bubby's Boys. I'm Ariel Kagan. I'm Brando Jokes. Joking around. Is that your full name? Brando Brandon Jokes. Jared Sobel. <laughs> all right, fellas, you coming back from tour? Tell me all about it. All right, where do we start? So much to talk about. Well, it's weird how one negative experience can change uh, we, a whole. Because on the, if we're gonna say how tour was, yeah, eighty, eighty-five percent of it, fantastic. Fantastic, strong for me. I'm gonna go. It was good. No, that's because of that end. Of no, it. no, even the other parts. Well, it's good. Because of the opportunity cost. And what? I, yeah, what I've learned about. Business. Is, is we didn't what have I've learned crop. about business and uh, the comedy of business, the the business side of comedy. Am I supposed to look at you or you or the camera? What am I supposed to? Why? Look at? How have you, you not learned you guys this? Are, you guys are fucking it's having a conversation. Episode okay, sixty-eight, so good, bro. Good, good. <laughs> how no. do you not know this? So real or talk, sixty-nine. Talk whatever. To you, real talk. Yeah. Um, that was an intense run because we took a bunch of L's. Yeah, like a lot of L's across the board. We okay. had uh, we hired across a friend the of board. mine. They said it. We've learned it. don't work with friends. Let's go back. So in December, I come to you and I'm like, I'm like, you know what I want to do? I want to try something for me. I want to bring a comedian I respect instead of a comedian who's like, hey man, I got millions of followers. What did I say? And uh, no, listen, you you at the time were like, I don't know, and I was like, I'm doing it. I don't give a shit what you think. And I wish I'd just taken that moment to get over my own arrogance. But what did I do when you, you did that within six weeks of that? Within six, so then, well, this one wasn't, this one I don't, on your side, it wasn't your L, right? Like Forget hiring my friend before that, the tour. Oh, yeah. So How are we going to celebrate yeah, yeah. our two-year anniversary? Let's go yeah, yeah, not you want, be at the club. Yeah, let's not be at the club. You know, you know how we built this successful business from us Let's go there? away from it let's for a bit. Let's just leave for a bit. Well, well, what's the worst that can happen? The club did fine. It did okay. So back to tour. Here's my here's my <laughs> issue. No, no, here's my issue. We, we, we talk about the business. I don't know what standard was kept between the time I was gone and when I got back. Well, the reality is whenever Good we, enough? Whenever we would sell out on tour on that weekend, we would have a zero at our club. Now, I know we've spoken about this a bunch off camera. I don't think we've talked about it on camera. You should never have a zero on a Friday or Saturday never. in Toronto or any oh city. Oh, my Even God. Even on any Ontario. I've learned the fact that we've sold tickets to a Christmas show. The fact that we sold out on tour. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so the tour started strong. London, shout out, Giggle Boys, good times. We were against Jizzleneck and... Yeah, yeah. Shawn we don't Mendes. need to go into play-by-play on every no, show. I'm going to say... Uh, the reality- Let's just do a quick... Highlights. Okay, what are your highlights? Best set for me, Sault Ste. Marie. 35 minutes of what I would say nothing but control. I, I got an applause break when I was like, how am I this good at stand-up and losing $1,000? The clapped. place lost their fucking minds. It's true. And then I uh, I would say I would have to shout out two, but like my best set was Hamilton, but then yes. Sault Ste. Marie was fire too. Yeah, your Hamilton set it was, was just probably high- the set of the tour. Yeah, but that being said, it's Sault Ste. Marie as a collective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we you got the reverse light. In then, comedy, you get the light for people who don't you know. You want to see how much that I That means like. you got to wrap it up. I lit him and then yelled, but keep going. You, you want to <laughs> uh, see how much I like Sault Ste. Marie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how you could have just been wearing it. Please show this whole part. Oh, I loved all of that. He walked off camera to take his shirt off. That's so funny. A lot of ass crack. Holy shit, bro. Not enough ass crack. It was an ordeal to show us that hoodie. I didn't think it was so stuck. The payoff is not worth it. Because you, ha- you have the same hoodie. Yeah, we have matching hoodies now. I just wanted to shout out Northern Superior It was a brewery. dope brewery. Great what? little local show there. Uh, we dropped in on it, did fives. But the thing is, is that Sault Ste. Marie had a lot more to, for us to gain and lose because what we've learned over the time is that we have to go promote our show. So instead of like a normal day or being at work where we just gave all of our energy into the club, we had to put all of our energy. So we were there. On a, our show. We left Wednesday at nine in the morning, and we yeah. were in Sault Ste. Marie by. Well, three. we had so many fights before we even got in the car, because we just fucked up the whole planning of that back end. If we're gonna tell them the else, we still haven't even talked. Like you brought up the bringing in the comic you respect thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's let's, like, yeah, where do you want to start? Part, so we uh, all it is is that we took a risk. It ended up breaking even, which is kind of our model. Our thing. It's kind of what we do best. But the problem is, the break even when you boys. break even, 
we're like still losing at the end of the day. Did you know Bubby in Jewish means um, it translates to break even in English? <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's why we're called the Bubby's Boys. Uh, I don't believe you. I'm lying. <laughs> I'm lying right now. It's a lie. Um, no, seriously though. So yeah, we, what we tried to do is we had, it started off strong. The two year anniversary was dope. Everyone who supported Backroom, keep doing it. We appreciate you. In fact, come support it more. Um, <laughs> but then we went on tour and then we came back for Ryan, which Ryan's yeah. out. Check him out if you haven't seen. Loved the shows with Ryan. It uh, showed what we're I, capable of. I, what I should say here is that anyone who came to any of the tour dates and saw us do stand up, minus four of you, thank you for coming. And I'm also, a big fan. Shout out to the people. I, I as appreciate well that, support. That from the tour that saw us grind that are now listening to this podcast. Yes. Because that's going to happen too. So, so let's talk about the four people. Which four people? You know which four people I want to talk about. Sudbury? Yes. There's only one show we actually got to talk about. Okay, so the only one show we didn't have a good time. And that show was and such w- a bad time. And, and didn't have a good time. Like, Niagara's show itself wasn't my favorite. Okay, so Max. The audience was very unruly. See, for us to do this properly, you're going to have to help fill in things and ask questions because, like, I haven't dealt with this level of anti-Semitics since I was like so in high school. We're on so sta- you're asking me to fill in the gaps? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> if I, if I, yeah, Max, can you I, act out the anti-Semite Max, parts? I've been um, talking about I've told this story a bunch since we've been home, but I've been doing it via text. And every time I've had to do it via text, I've like rolled my eyes and like didn't want to go tell into people. details. No, I do because it should be aware. So just shout aware. out first. First, shout out first, we did – a show now. <laughs> what we've learned as comedians, we talk about the back end of things. Wait, wait. You think people are going to watch what we're talking about now as anti-Semitism? Like, don't do that. I don't care what they do. No, they come to this podcast and be like, fucking Jews. I'm just telling them what we dealt with. Jews. And I'm going to go through the whole experience. So what we deal with <laughs> is when we went on tour, the majority of shows we did, we treated like the club or like the Bubby's Boy stuff. We just put on a show and took 100% of everything. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, in other places, you would have to deal with an inside producer. So instead of us going directly to the venue, there was a middle party. And every time this happened on tour, everyone we spoke to kind of refused the third. Like on that, we would give a 70 30 split in favor of us. But then the co producer would get that. Yeah, so you're helping us promote the show. Because you already run shows there. Because we know we can't sell 60 tickets in these towns. We can, we prove that. Yeah, but like we'd never been there. So why would you not? Support the person who's supporting the scene already. Like support us, support. We'll, we'll if a tour has done well, Ariel and myself or whoever the touring act should be able to pull 10 to 20 people. The bar itself should be able to pull 10 to 15. And the third producer should be able to pull 10 to 15. That's a fun night. Okay. That's yeah. 50, 60 people. That's okay. a fun evening. Yep. So we should have realized. And it's not on them. No, but, of course it's not. But on if them. we agree on that. It's kind of on you. But what we've learned is because no one agreed on it, that going forward, yeah. that if there's that we're, for the way we want to do business, and if you're an outside person watching this that does comedy in a different town, and you're this outside producer, this is how we want to do business, we're willing to give 30% of our ticket sales for someone to just push on their end. Because or, no we or we can come and take all 100. No, if we do that, then it's what happened in Sault Ste. Marie, where we have to go on Wednesday, and I'd rather be at the club until Friday yeah, or yeah. Saturday. So if you're outside Man, and you're listening. That drive to Sault Ste. Marie. It's because we went to brutal. Sudbury and then back. Yeah, and then we added Sudbury and back in the middle of it. Brutal. So in Sudbury, we dealt. I don't, I don't know why you did. Because like, Ariel's the man. It, but it's also like. Because I. Ariel's the man. Because yeah. I'd rather. If I'm going to be away from my beautiful club that I've built and cultivated. In my home. And where I feel the most comfortable and I can be myself and I, I get the most enjoyment out of my life. I got to go make sure these shows are as good as they can fucking so be. So the show we're going to talk about, and unfortunately it goes back to the rule we told you about, about 50% about the good things and then all of the bad things. Unfortunately, on this podcast, no one's going to get to hear about the amazing times we had. Yeah, and we had great times. We had a great time, and we met great friends. And we we had, had great. We were friends. We just, I, we got, just to, I got to go on a road trip with my best friend. It, like, you know, yeah, but, it was chill. So if we're going to talk about the, the worst place we ever. We fight. Well, we did, but there was no reason to actually have yeah. real fights because it was like everyone against us, right? So for the show we're going to talk about, and we're not even going to talk about how to Sault Ste. Marie, we drove six to nine hours to get there to compete, the town was cool. to compete against a town that the, the hockey arena had a home playoff game that a third of the people in the town went to that. And it was Easter weekend. So we pulled 18 <laughs> seats with just us. Anyways, we're not even going to talk about that. Not even the win, kind of. The L, the biggest L of the whole thing. Well, it was an only reason it was an L was because not only because we were losing money, but the show wasn't fun. So lack of communication. I, I've worked two years nonstop for no money. 
if the show's fun, it's I go, worth it. thank you so much. Like Sue Marie, we broke That's even. That's a gift. Right? We broke even. We even lost money in Sue Saint Marie. It was the best show. So we go to Sudbury, and immediately we get there, and we get there at four, and there's already backlash. Are we getting all, am I getting everything? Yep. So the owner, well, well, uh, like, like, that's what I'm saying. Respectfully, we're talking okay, about our so experience we, in it. So what we experience is we're a venue that we are a venue. Like, yeah, we're comedians first. And if anyone needs to hear that out loud, specifically ourselves, we did not first. communicate the well, best with anybody, with anybody there. But that's because we thought there was a, a grace. Like we run a we venue. Under- misunderstood the deal. We thought that once you set something in stone and you got our posters. OK, so long story short, the venue wasn't ready for us. We had to wait outside for three hours on us because we came to a different town but like we, we were, were out of flyers was so this Sault Ste. Marie or this Sudbury? was Sudbury so Sudbury. we drive back to Sudbury Ooh. we drive we stay in Sault Ste. Marie on the Wednesday yep. Thursday and then we drive Friday m- morning we left a bit later than I wanted to but what would we have done otherwise because we didn't we have flyers. flyers so we get to Sudbury we handed them all out so the venue isn't there to let us in and when we do finally get in the venue and this is after three hours of just hanging out downtown Sudbury the venue has only put up a flyer in the door. They haven't like one. We prep, two. right? Sorry, so what two. we do is we'll send you, and I say we, shout out to Ariel Kagan because yeah, I do like nothing. Send posters. Like send custom made posters make, to each venue. And he'll make handbills that if distributed. Now what we've learned is the radio thing. We send you the posters so every washroom should have a poster on it. Again, we didn't communicate. Yeah, we should but the posters are supposed like to aggressive go aggressive with our communication. This is what this stuff is for. Honestly, we can't be more aggressive. So thank you for letting us be more aggressive. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we didn't we got there to to reveal that none of our handbills were out for the public to grab. There was nothing out in washrooms. There was nothing out in the venue. Like we were it was Easter Friday. We walked but there was a venue open and it was the only bar open in town. So busy. And it was so busy that if we had flyers, we could have spoken to like 180, 300 people. But they didn't even go next door and give them handbills for us or like no one knew that we were coming to this town. Okay, all right. So the people who did find out were from us. Now our show says eight o'clock. Eventbrite ad uh, Facebook so ad. So our show says eight o'clock. So the reality of it is is that we have eleven, fifteen people show up for eight o'clock. 7.45, 7.30 for this show. She tells us, the owner, that we have to wait for the producer himself to show up. What? Uh, Ariel told me that it was what? in the whole arrangement that, that the he producer was, on, was the on the show. So as someone who runs a venue, that's our deal. So I respect that. Like, I know it's a pain in the ass. Oh so this guy doesn't get there until, what, 8.05? Yeah, 8.05. And then he's like, we uh, usually start at 9. And all the people who buy at the door will show up at 9. What happened at 9? All the people who would have paid at the door showed up. And then as it goes on like towards karaoke, people. it gets busy. And then as I'm on stage, Ariel tells me this, that I'm on stage. The guy goes to Ariel and goes, oh, I didn't know you guys were the real deal. I didn't know that you, you guys were. You said this to my face. While I'm, on, like, while I'm performing. And, like, and uh, just to correct you, you didn't say, and no, no, I'm not trying to shit talk you. You were a good comic. And a good friend now, and kind we, of. And like we understand, we just do business different. He we felt so, dude, dude felt so bad. He gave me like a half ounce or an ounce of weed. Like you saw how much weed he gave me. The next day we asked him to do Sudbury with us or Sue Saint Marie. Because we had a no he's opener. Good. He's a good comic. He's really good. We had no opener. He, dude, dude, yeah, he's a funny dude. Like he's just a funny dude. He literally liked his comedy. He did feel bad. He he. We gave the bucket out. He said the bucket usually gives like 30, 40 bucks. Bucket bucket brought in like one hundred and fifty. Like people. I'm not saying it was the worst experience, but now let's talk about the show. The show itself. We're like two minutes now. Into we don't double know hosting. if people got drunk. We made them wait from eight or seven thirty till nine before the show, so they may have been drinking aggressively. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. So Ariel and I figured out what we do. And if you want to see it live, come to Backroom Comedy Club because it's now the standard. We, we host together. Okay. So when we're hosting and we're getting to know the audience, we're like three minutes in, and two of them take off hats and they're skinheads, and the guy behind them has a skinhead. So I, I think it was you. You're like, what am I performing for skinheads? Yeah, but then also we had just discovered that the lady. Was her, I think her parents were cousins. Oh, the incest. And that's what really, like, it was like Tinder to a match. Incest came up. Oh, we I didn't bring be, it up. Oh, yeah, I the can guy, be racist. This, this if wo- this lady's admitting to incest in my family, yeah, 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 yeah. we can do whatever the if fuck we want at this show. If this woman's husband's admitting his wife is saying weird stuff because she's a product of incest, and he's okay with that, and now his kids are a product of incest, kept, and he's kept bringing it kept up. Kept bringing it up. These we people now in front. At one point, Ariel goes, oh, are we performing for skinheads? And then Ariel's like, ha-ha. And he's like, why? You want to see my tattoo? He goes, I have a tattoo. And he's like, you want to see it? No. Now, for me, before we why get would into I the devastating, before we get into the weird parts, the, the, the thing that bothered me is that over both of our sets individually, it clicked that this wasn't 
comedy. Fun. It was literally us. It wasn't performing, comedy. But it was like us performing. So at one point, I'm on stage <laughs> and I'm making the anti Semites laugh. And I'm realizing that there's only 15 people in the venue and I'm losing money. And at home, there's like 30 people at my comedy club and my girlfriend and my cat are at home. And I haven't really, like, I love my parents and Hamilton's cool, but like, I've never really felt like a home since my grandma passed. And like, while I'm on stage and Ario saw the moment in my eyes, it was like, really? Like, I'm making a bunch of people that don't like me laugh and like, I'm getting paid, I'm losing money to make people that don't like, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not like oh, they paid it. me four oh, grand. Yeah. It's not like it I was sold real. my soul. I, I saw like the light switch off in his eyes. I was done. Because like, it's this. like the thing with my comedy and if you like it or you hate it, I don't have a conscious thought. And I had to like put up a blocker <laughs> where I, I couldn't say what I was actually yeah, feeling. Stream of consciousness. <laughs> but I couldn't, I, couldn't, yeah, yeah. I couldn't say what I actually felt <laughs> in, right, in right, fear right. of getting my face kicked in and thrown in the trains. Now, I want to hear what you said because it was probably really funny. I'm no. sorry I'm being confrontational yeah, right it's, now. It's just funny you know, for you to say, like, I'm, I don't have a conscious thought. Bro, I'm Miss, <laughs> I'm miss Maisel, man. I'm fucking Senora Silva. He, he no. doesn't mean conscious. He, he means he's in a flow state. I'm having fun. You see how I talk off stage? Yeah, yeah. So the reality of it was like, is yeah, that I, I had to, like, that's just a funny so I now have to keep my guard up in fear that we're going to get beat up. And, like, I'm not necessarily. See, I, was, I don't know. So you run, you're a sassy. Bitch. Here's the thing. I grew so I don't know if this is why, but in my heart is like I grew up in South Africa. This guy ne- has I've never. I don't. I'm not afraid of you, man. I'm not afraid. Wasn't the right. Well, you're gonna kill me in Sudbury. Then your the rest of your life spent in Sudbury, Sudbury jail. Enjoy your fucking stupid life. What a waste. But I'm saying I couldn't have fun in a world where I can usually have fun. I couldn't poke the bear. It was like yeah, yeah. I'm literally. You, so we had that talk on the you're way also, out. You're like, how yeah. much money would it take? It's like, well, I would charge now to leave the house if you want to book Bobby's Boys. It's two grand. And then if it's like for your anti-Semites, it's four. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not like I'm not leaving home to lose money. <laughs> But I'm not moving home to lose money to like now I'm on stage and it clicks where it's like, this is what I'm chasing. Yeah, like yeah. I get tour gets better, but like this is it. Shout out right now. If you're from Northern Ontario and you're not an anti-Semite, thank you. If you're not a white supremacist and you came from the North, we're proud of you. Yeah, so let's fast forward to the end. So we're off stage. Everyone's leaving now. Now this happened to me before we're, you tell the, your story. You This happened, like what Ariel went through, when I went through and then had to watch Ariel go through. So... Yeah, so they're like coming up to us, and we're like standing there. Okay, the, so one of them on the that told us about the tattoos. Picture in your head now, Bobby Hill as an adult. Oh, sorry, are we boring you? Sorry. Picture no, Bobby Hill. Did not. you hear that? I, I uh, trust me, they uh, heard it. So yeah, it's yeah. Fine. Did you did you see? <laughs> did you picture? You know Bobby Hill. No. King of the Hill. Oh yeah. Now picture him as an adult. Okay. Now that's the one that had the tattoos. It was like okay. a big baby looking boy. Like a baby, like a, like a Huey. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like if you were a diaper for Halloween, you'd be like, ah, I get it. Like yeah. you look like a then big baby, the, a big racist baby. You'd see the tattoos. You'd see the fucking Nazi tattoos. So his friends come up to us and they go up to Ariel. They go up to me first. They go, you tell the story. Yeah. So I'm, they come up to me and he shakes my hand, but he grips it like I owe him money. Like hard, yeah, yeah. like way too hard. Yeah. And he's like holding me in position. And he's and making he, full like dead contact. Dead eye contact. He goes. I can't even he say. goes. I'm, he I'm goes, really sorry, my f- for my friend. We're not all well, white supremacists. And then winks, but like a long, like wink. a like a like a yeah. We're definitely white supremacists. Like you a, know? And then at this point, while Ariel, I had to deal with his friend, deal with that. And then he shook my hand and goes, Ariel. His friend comes up to me, like the drunken, the, like the one that said he had a tattoo. He goes, "You're funny for a Jew." Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Thanks why. for the I mean, that I'm s- funny for a Jew, Max. That's uh, great. I mean, and I just want a Freaky Friday for my body, so it's convenient. We see it differently. Like, I see. I'm not saying that. I'm just like. I see uh, three white trash. No, I see three white trash sad men trying to be funny. Yeah, the but truth? they don't know how to be funny in that moment. Because they moment, huff, co- huff glue and in that moment they probably work in the nickel mines. Like, <laughs> in that moment, when Ariel, when I was on stage and I mean you made eye contact and that light went off, part of me realized that if I was in that town for a longer period of time. Like I may have become a white supremacist, not because yeah. I believe in it, but because this of the, is a wild theory. Because of the community and the team building, you know what I'm saying? Like because <laughs> of nothing else to do. The nothing first, else to do. First Jewish white. You can either you can either sell <laughs> meth, you can either sell meth or smoke meth in Sudbury. This sounds like a really good movie. It, it was the like it's, it sounds like the, the first pilot of Chappelle. The, yeah. Jewish the, the, the Jewish white the black white supremacist. The Jewish white supremacist. What was his name? Anyway, so yeah, that was our experience Clayton with Sudbury. Music. Good reference. Doesn't know Bobby Hill, but can tell me the 
white supremacist black guy. <laughs> Real talk, though. That's what we dealt yeah. with. Now, we have enough time. We can talk about some positives, too. That went by faster. But as a team, and we're I'm glad I got to go. Two minutes, by I'm, the way. I'm glad I got to hang out with you. We ended up at the Bel Air Motel. Shout out, Bel Air Motel. <laughs> Max, Ariel did his best job as being a, of the talent, the tour manager. He, he ends up on Expedia, okay? Ryan. I used Expedia to book Ryan Stout's hotel when he was in town, and it went well. Sorry, Ryan, in advance. So, so Ariel found us a hotel that was dirt cheap, cheapest in town for, like, not cheapest in town, but reasonable for, like, at a 4.7 out of stars, out of 5. Damn. Higher yeah. than the, 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 Delta hotel. the Delta Hotel. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was the worst thing ever. It was one of the worst it felt places. like a residential school, and I know that's too soon. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Man, Sudbury, <laughs> I, uh, Ash has a theory that Sudbury's like that because fucking all the genocide of the Indians and it's just a haunted town. And as someone who's been there, I felt it. You, you got it. <laughs> what did you say? As someone who believes in energy <laughs> part time, how did it, how did Sudbury feel? It's sad. <laughs> I think we see it different. I don't. I think that's more the existential crisis at heart. You know what's cool though? Because well, are we happy here. You know what's really cool. Oh, you think I, I love? Think I am li- happy here. Yeah. That's what I realized. You think so? For four grand, I'll perform for you and your racist family, but I'm not leaving the house for less than two. I'm not yeah. leaving Toronto, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but we still got to make that part. Totes, um, this is my best part. We have time to talk about it. Uh, if you have a chance and you want to get away and you're looking for or you want to invest in property, check out our Windsor. Yeah, the, the best, the most surprising place on tour. Windsor. What we learned is Windsor, the ugly girl in high school that now is a smoke show. Check out Windsor. Yeah. We want we want this you're, you're from the area. Yeah. What do you we want we it's want beautiful. the city of Windsor to sponsor us. I, I talk shit like I talk shit, but it's like it's out of love. Yeah, but it's like I like talk shit out of Hamilton. I get it. No, no, like you talk shit of South Africa. Is, uh, Paul, do I? Paul in Windsor, he talk like he always gives me shit. And like all those guys, they give me shit about how I have jokes about Windsor. But it's like those jokes are true, but there's also a charm to it. There's a blue collar fucking charm to it. It's a great comedy city. They're the fucking best. I'm there uh, May 10th and 11th at the club. What Shout just out. happened? Windsor Comedy Club. What just May happened here? What? You asked. I know I did, but that turned into some horde of... What? I'm kidding. May 10th and 11th, <laughs> was it? Yeah. I'm ha- being helpful now. I just... I have to be... Me- One of us has to be mean at all times. That was mean? Well, I, I was trying it to It didn't me. make sense. I was yeah. just like, how, why are we advertising Max? You can't even see his face. You asked... Yeah, what, I do I, what do I think about Windsor? I no, okay, so I can't wait to see. He was we shouting got, out the city. We just got lit. I wanted to shout out Windsor. I just want to shout out Hamilton. Had a great time. Shout out Collingwood. That was dope. Collingwood, also very surprising. Liked it. Shout out Giggle Boys. They put on a good show. Yep. Um, Check all these. I guess all I'm out. trying to say is stay out of Niagara Falls and stay out of Sudbury. Yeah. I, that's fun everywhere else. You don't have to stay out of it. Uh, Niagara Falls. We just made a weird move. We went to a weird street. And Sudbury, if you're all that racist, the rider's gone up. <laughs> <laughs> the four, the, the the minimums. It's 4K. a guarantee now. We never had a minimum. We have a minimum now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, what I learned coming out of it, one huge takeaway, is comedy needs to up its own standard. I'm sorry, you guys think so lowly of what we can do. Who me? No, producers out there putting on shows like well, dude, we not ha- thinking about it from a the customer's perspective and b okay, as a show. We're forgetting that we have the luxury. We perform one to two hours a week. We build a little safe space. We have a place where people can come see stand up comedy yeah. at all times. So Do it's that. like I agree with you, but it's not yes. But for us, we didn't always feel this way. We just good news, dude. We even made our oppressors laugh. You know, we're good. at st- We're great at stand up comedy. It would be awesome uh, to actually perform in front of real Nazis. You know what, what I mean? What were those fake Nazis? Yeah, they're, they're like they they're, didn't kick our teeth in. They're so like, they're... yeah, exactly. I want to like roll the dice. You know what I mean? You know what the craziest <laughs> part? And we'll end, we'll end, we'll end soon. Like I promise. But when you were like, dude, you dealt with that once. Imagine how black comics feel it every, every Yeah, yeah. Like I, it's all I could think about. We dealt the whole with it time. once out of fourteen. I was like, "This dates, is fucking weird. What a weird we, night." We did thirteen different cities or something, and one experience was like, "Whoa!" And then like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." Wow. And then you hear a co- black comic say, "They like we go to this town, and they're like, pretty funny for a blackie," and you're like, "Holy fuck, dude! What the fuck?" Well, wow. yeah, again, check it out for yourself. Uh, Backroom Comedy Club. Yeah, yeah, we don't do that at Backroom Comedy Club. What don't we that do? That was a weird. What don't segue. we do at Backroom Comedy Club? I just said. No, I know that. That was across. Ontario is just a weird place. That's what I learned. What I learned on tour, Ontario, not great. Like, we're very fortunate to live in Toronto. And sadly, although the Toronto people aren't the greatest at first when you meet them. Not very warm. The best crowds. Yeah. Like, the best vibe, the best food. Like, I had a great time most of the time. We had good food in Sault Ste. Marie. We had good food across the board. Yeah, that's but true. But Sault Ste. Marie, check out P. 
Yeah. Place fire. Uh, brought to you by, yeah. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, with the uh, Bubby's Boys, check us out here on YouTube or Spotify. Like, follow comment, our subscribe, Instagram, our follow. TikTok. Um, Tickets at this. backroomcomedyclub.com. More information, bubbiesboyspresents.com. If you like this, tell two friends to tell two friends. And if you didn't, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Bubby's Boys! <laughs>